Welcome back to the second part of our tutorial series about building a rasterizing tool inside of Houdini. My name is Helge Maus from Pixeltrain. In the first part of our tutorial we built this rasterizer subnetwork and added some parameters onto it so that we can rasterize any surface which we add here to the first input of this subnetwork. In this second part of the tutorial, we want to prepare now the output of the rasterizer so that we can add materials later really easily. And for this, we have to add UV maps on one side and somehow a selection for the different kind of outputs we want to have later. So we want to talk about groups inside of Houdini. First, let us look into the output of the rasterizer. If we hold down the middle mouse key here, you see in the moment we get one big polygon, name it soup, with 36,000 polygons here. So we can't decide what polygon is a plate and which polygon here is a sphere. And if we want to add later materials on this surface, we need to select. Sure, we can dive inside of this subnetwork and go into the tree and add here some kind of material. In Houdini, we do this with a material node. But if we do it like that here, we have to dive into the network to change the materials here inside the network. And this is something I don't want to do with my tool. For me, it would be much nicer if I can add materials outside. And if you take a closer look into this materials node here, you see that you add materials and here you have a group selector. And this group selector is later for us the idea to do it outside. We only have to do go inside of this subnet and build groups for everything we want to address later. So, how do we do that? I remove this material for a moment and we want to take a look here into this left tree here. You see, I have added here a normal node so that we can change from the outsides the normals a little bit and we want to now select everything which is inside this tree and for this we can add a group node. With this group node here we can now decide how groups are generated. Here you have the group name which you want to generate in our case because it's the left side and in this plates underscore mat so that I later see this is material. Then we have a group type. You see we can add this to every kind of component. In our cases, I want to have the primitives for this. And then you have different kind of generations here. You can generate them by normals or bounding regions and so on. And if you leave this here, the first option base group empty, you get a group with everything which comes down here, the stream. And that's exactly what we want. If we now press the middle mouse button here, you see we have one primitive group with the name plates and we have 11,000 polygons or primitives inside of it. And this propagates through the whole network until we go here to the null output. And if we are now outside, make a middle mouse button click here, you see we have this group still intact. We dive in and make the second group. And we type group create, for example, you see it's absolutely the same node like group. We add it here behind the sphere and we have only to name this spheres underscore mat. And so it propagates also through the tree now. And we have now two groups outside which we can use later for the materials. In the next step, we want to talk about UVs inside of Houdini. We build this geometry. But if we later want to add, for example, textures, we need UV informations. And if you hold down the middle mouse button here, you see we don't have UVs. We have the normals from our normal nodes, but no UVs. This is also something we have to add now in every tree. Let us start here on the left side again. I set my display flag here to the normals. And to add UV coordinates, we have a whole bunch of nodes here. If you type in UV, you see we have UV project, we have here UV texture and so on. And in our case, I start here with a really simple node, UV texture, which adds UV coordinates to our tree. We add it here. And instantly we see now if we go here with the middle mouse button over this, we see here vertex attribute UVs. 
but to check what's going on it would be nice to have a little bit of a uv grid and you can import it by yourself or you use a uv shade node or uv quick shade node if you place it behind this here you see this is the uv we can now check and it's not exactly what we want you see it's mirrored somehow and to change this we can go here into the uv texture node and change some of the parameters if you want to see the uvs side by side with the original 3d object you can click here on this little icon here and split your view in two views side by side and now we can change every view like we want and if you go here to the right view you can hold down the space bar and press the 5 key and so you switch here to the UV mode and you see now this is your UV space here and if you select something here you see these are the UVs which are placed now here I know that they overlap here but that's not a problem for my rasterizer because I want to have a metal texture on both sides and it's absolutely okay if they overlap but I don't want that they are flipped and maybe I want to yeah, unstretch them a little bit and to do that we can now go to the UV texture node and here are the texture types you see orthographic is exactly what we want but you have other texture types also which you can play with so for example polar or faces or something like that uh, or the graphic like I've said is okay the projection axis is Y that's also okay but then you see here you can change the scale and the offset and if you go to the scale you see here you have a scale in three dimensions and if you go here to Y and make this negative to minus one you see the whole texture now flips that's exactly what I want and if you now take a look from the top space bar 2 over this viewport you can now go into for example the scale here and change the scale until you see squares here at this point okay now I think the UV is okay for us on this side here let us go here do the same thing on the other side can yeah, bring this node out by shaking it and bring it in Okay, and you see this is our little sphere and we have here these stretched UVs at this point and so we add a UV project node for this and if you add this now you can change here the projection type here for example to something like polar and if you want you can play a little bit with these options but I think looks good for me for now for this little sphere and so we also have now our UVs here on the object we go back to our home scene and we can add our display flag here back to the rasterizer at this point and now we have our UVs on our object we remove the quick shade at this point and so we now can start adding here our materials onto this asset because now we have our two groups and we also have UV coordinates for both objects